Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Green Bolas's Citadel combo deck. And some of you may remember the Wayward Frenzy deck we played a while back, where we tried to combine Wayward Swordtooth with Experimental Frenzy to combo off. This time we're replacing Experimental Frenzy with Bolas's Citadel from War of the Spark. Six mana for a legendary artifact that says we can look at the top card of our library at any time. And we can also play the top card of our library, which means we also get to play lands. And if we cast a spell this way, pay life equal to the converted mana cost of that spell instead of paying its mana cost. And then we can also tap the Bolas of Citadel and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents we control to make each opponent lose 10 life. So it also doubles up as a win condition as well as a card draw engine. So Bolas of Citadel is a very powerful card. And the way we're trying to abuse Bolas of Citadel is by gaining a whole bunch of life. Thanks to our Wild Growth Walker, which says whenever a creature you control explores, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Wild Growth Walker and gain three life. So the entire deck is built around this idea of trying to get a Wild Growth Walker in play and then explore a whole bunch to make up for the life lost to the Bolas of Citadel. So we can essentially play our entire deck as soon as we play a Bolas of Citadel. And then it's not too difficult to win from there. And the way we make sure we can keep playing cards of the top of our library instead of hitting a land pocket is of course thanks to all the explore creatures we have. Since with an explore trigger we get to put a lands of the top of our deck into our hand. So we make sure that the top of our deck is always stacked with action and besides the explorer creatures like Jade Light Ranger and Murfolk Branchwalker we also have the full four copies of Path of Discovery which says whenever any creature enters the battlefield under our control it explores so the explorer creatures explore an additional time but the uh, creatures like Wild Growth Walker, Wayward Surtooth and Lunar Elves now also explore when they enter the battlefield so we get to gain more life with Wild Growth Walkers and we also make sure that we keep hitting spells on top of our deck and get rid of any excess lands and then besides the explore mechanic, of course we also get to play additional lands of the top, thanks to Wayward Swordtooth, letting us play additional lands each turn. And finally we also have the full four copies of Treasure Map, which is a two mana artifact, and we can pay one and tap it to scry one, which means we get to potentially put the top card of our library on the bottom, so if there's a land on top of our deck that we can no longer play since we've already played all the lands for the turn, we can simply scry to the bottom and continue comboing off. And then Treasure Map also synergizes nicely with Bolas' Citadel, since once it transforms into Treasure Cove we get three treasure tokens, so that provides a lot of non-land permanence for us to sacrifice to the Bolas' Citadel's ability to try and close out the game, since usually just activating Bolas' Citadel twice will win us the game, and it's not even necessary to attack with a bunch of creatures, even though of course that's a nice backup plan to have as well. So let's take a look at our entire deck list. We've covered most of the cards. So at one mana we've got Lanner Elves to help us ramp and also a creature to go with Path of Discovery. And then at two mana we've got four copies of Murfolk Branchwalker, a 2-1 that explores when it enters the battlefield. The full four copies of Wild Growth Walker which is one of the key cards in the deck. Also four copies of Bond of Flourishing from War of the Spark which is a sorcery that lets us look at the top three cards of our library. We can reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand. So the only card that Bond of Flourishing doesn't find in the deck is additional copies of Bond of Flourishing, otherwise it finds everything else. Or artifact in Bolas of Citadel, or enchantments like Path of Discovery, all our creatures and also lands if we just need to hit an additional land drop. And then Bond of Flourishing also gains three life, which is nice when going off with Bolas of Citadel, since every extra life means we get to play additional cards off the top if we didn't already have a Wild Growth Walker in play. Then we've got our four copies of Treasure Map to provide a bit of card advantage in the grindier matchups and then also to help us combo off. Then at three mana we've got two copies of Gift of Paradise which is another enchantment that we can essentially play for free with Bolas of Citadel since it gains three life when it enters the battlefield and then it enchants one of our lands and that enchanted land can tap to add two mana of any one color to our mana pool. This also helps us fix our mana and ramp into Bolas of Citadel. Then we've got the full four copies of Jade Light Ranger which explores twice when it enters the battlefield. And then the full four copies of Wayward Swordtooth, which can also help us ramp by playing additional lands each turn. And with all the explorer creatures we have, we can often end up with a bunch of extra lands in our hand that we can then play out thanks to the Swordtooth. And also an important piece of the puzzle once we're going off with Bolas the Citadel, so we can play additional lands off the top. And also turns into a 5-5 creature that can attack and block, which is nice. And then at 4 mana we've got the full four copies of Path of Discovery, which turns all our creatures into explorer creatures. And then of course the full four copies of Bolas the Citadel, which is our primary win condition. The backup plan is to attack with creatures. 
and then our mana base only 22 lands since we have so many ramp creatures and explorer creatures we've got six swamps eight forests the full four overgrown tombs and four woodland cemeteries as well so that's the deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw this hand seems fine need to draw into some more black mana sources but with all these explore creatures, that shouldn't be too difficult. Moment of Craving kills the Elves, means we can't play the Jade Light yet. Alright, we will need some lands here. This is probably going to eat a counter spell. Instead of Liliana's Triumph to kill the Wild Growth Walker. Fair enough. Just need lands. Alright, a lot's attack. Contempt kills the first ranger. Uh, gift wouldn't be horrible, but I think just a land would be better here. Alright, so didn't find any lands of our two Jade Light Rangers, which is unfortunate. Let's attack. Find a forest. Alright, just need one more land for Citadel, cast down kills Ranger, but in reality the Wild Growth Walker is actually more important here for us. Jace, alright, opponents mostly tapped out here, so if we can find a land we're good. They're gonna mill themselves, milling over Duress and Narset, and there's a land. Alright, time to start going off. Alright, sadly hit a land right away. But we found a treasure map, which can help us next turn. So now we just want to try and find Wayward Swordtooths, more treasure maps, more explorer creatures, Path of Discovery. Opponent with a Flux Channeler. Alright, we'll draw the Overgrown Tomb for now. Play land of the top. There's a Path of Discovery. Might eat a counter spell. Gets negated. Alright, need some more explore creatures here. Another map. Scry land to the bottom. And now we hit a land pocket, sadly. Well, we kind of drew the lands in the wrong order here. Found a pocket of spells earlier with the Jade Lights instead of lands, and now we're hitting some land pockets, but might still be able to go off here. Jace is at 7 loyalty, so close to ultimating. Branch Walker finds a Bone of Flourishing, which we'll keep on top. And I guess we'll find a branch walker. Play gift for free. And gift of paradise represents an additional permanent for the Bolas of Citadel here. Jade line gets countered. Another Citadel. We could play the Citadel, it's gonna cost us 6 life, which is quite a bit. I think we're just gonna scrind that to the bottom for now. Play Swordtooth. Alright. Path. Hopefully no more negates. Play our second land thanks to Swordtooth. 
Can no longer afford to pay four here, so we'll play the Branch Walker. Gain some more life. Key path on top. And I don't think we'll be worried about our life total anymore for the rest of the game. Explore all those lands into our hands. Keeping everything on top, basically. And we would basically need to hit like four lands in a row before we can no longer do anything and we still have a treasure map to scry a lands to the bottom, so we can basically play our entire deck here at this point. So it's just about using the citadel and then finding a second citadel and using it a second time to win the game. And that shouldn't be too difficult. So if we can find a Citadel with the Bonds, that would be nice. So we can just cast a second one once we feel like it. Find a land. More Wild Growth Walkers. Alright, I think we're almost there. There's another citadel on top. Alright, so first we'll go to combat here. Tank Jace, just in case. I guess we should have attacked our opponent here instead of Jace, but they were gonna trump anyway. Then we can use Citadel. Sack all our useless creatures. And some treasure maps. Some Path of Discoveries, that's fine. And then we can replay another one off the top. Or one from hand, doesn't really matter here. Keep the new one, use this one, and we should have just enough here to close out the game. Sweet, and there we go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. So we'll keep double wild growth walkers, so just need to find our citadel at some point, hit some land drops. Treasure map can help there too, as well as the branch walker, so fine opener. Turn one miscloat herald, so could be the mono blue tempo deck, in which case it's gonna be difficult to resolve our bolus of citadel. Although the wild growth walker beatdown plan is not bad here. Hopefully no essence captures. Just an opt. Miss Cloak gets in there. And our opponent taps out for Tempest Jin. Alright, we're just gonna play Jade Light Ranger here, I think. Try and find some lands. Land and treasure map, put that in the graveyard. Alright. So our opponent's got their clock established. If they can back it up with a ton of counter spells, we're in trouble. 
But if we can resolve another wild growth and a branch walker, gain some life back, then we might be able to outrace them. Terramander, currently two opts in the graveyard. I think we play another wild growth and then a branch walker here. They might counter this one. And let's attack. Bond the Flourishing can gain a bit of life back, find some more Explorer creatures. Or maybe a Citadel. On the bright side, opponent doesn't have a Curious Obsession drawing them extra cards every turn. Also, double Tempest Gin does increase the pressure significantly. They might spell pierces just to tap us out. And they will. I guess we'll pay. And find Branch Walker. Path of Discovery, Gift of Paradise. I think we'll take the Branch Walker. And then play the Stapped. No attacks. Another opt. So there are currently five spells in Graveyard. So they could transform the Terramander and hit us for quite a bit here. So they decide not to adapt and instead keep up mana for a charter course into a land. Our opponent does not have a wizard in place, so a wizard's retort is not a factor here. They could have Murfolk Trickster at any point. They could use that to remove the ability on the Wild Growth Walker, tap it down. We could play Gifts, and then Branch Walker and Bond of Flourishing all in the same turn. I guess we can lead with Bond of Flourishing. Might pick up another Explorer creature we want to play instead. Jade Light Ranger is not a bad one. I guess that's fine. And then I'll just play the Jade Light Ranger instead of the Branch Walker and the Gifts. Do we want another Jade Light Ranger? I think so. And move to combats. Alright, so the Wild Growth Walker beatdown plan seems to be working. Opponent's got 16 points of evasive damage. Next turn we're gaining a ton more life. So your opponent's digging with Charter Course. Discards Islands. And Cure Obsession. Into a second Cure Obsession. Still not enough to kill us here. So, are they hoping to draw into one drop they can play and use as a chum blocker, but then they're still dead on board? Since we have four lethal attackers. Cure Obsession on Tempest Gin. And that's basically a concession here. We can play some more Explorer creatures here, not that it's really necessary. Could have played Gift before playing Branch Walker. Now we can play a Treasure Map, but yeah, our opponent's dead on board with one mana. There's nothing they can do that's relevant. Alright, we're on the draw with an awkward opener without green mana. Don't think we can keep, sadly. Alright, we'll try this one. And do we want to keep a forest? Not really. Would rather just draw a swamp or action. Sacred Foundry into Healer's Hawk. 
All right. Wild Growth Walker is going to be pretty important in an aggro matchup. And down to Vanguard. So we could wait and cast a Bond of Flourishing now, since Wild Growth Walker doesn't block a down to Vanguard anyway. Maybe try and play Wild Growth alongside another Explorer creature in the same turn. I think I'll go with that. And no Explorer creature. We did find a Sawtooth. And a Lander Elves. I guess I'll take the Lander Elves here. Can play that alongside. Maybe a Wild Growth Walker next turn or an extra cheap creature we can play once we play the path. Surtooth. Alright. I guess I'll go Surtooth into Lanaralves. And then next turn we might be able to Path of Discovery into Wild Growth Walker. If we hit a land here. Ooh, double Histro Banalia is gonna be rough. No blocks. Alright, we did find a land, luckily. Can play the land thanks to Swordtooth. Gives us a City's Blessing, so we've got an extra blocker. But this is gonna hurt. Back to back Histro Banalia. Opponents playing red, so they probably have heroic reinforcements in there too. And yep, there we go. Heroic reinforcements for four mana. And I'm pretty sure we're dead here. But let's double check. So that's 20. Yeah, even if we block two night tokens, we're still dead. Alright, GG's. So. We mulligans, opponent had kind of the nut draw. It's gonna happen. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty weird opening hand. No double green. Uh, so we can cast a Jade Light at the moment. Swordtooth, double Citadel. So in a more controlling matchup, this hand could be fine since we have time to get up to 6 mana and play double Citadel. In the more aggro matchups, this could be too slow. I think I'm gonna risk it. Turn one watery grave. Still no second green source here. Opponent on Sultai with a turn two branch walker. Alright, the mid range matchups should be okay. Of course, your opponent has cards like Vivian that can blow up Citadel, maybe Hostage Taker to steal it. But at least we'll have a bit of time to set up. Opponent does nothing. Lander Elves a draw. Alright, I think we'll play the Elves here. And if they have removal, they're likely pointing it at the Surtooth anyway. And then if we draw a land off the top, we can play Citadel. Alright, Hostage Taker. Steal Surtooth. That's okay. All right, it's no land, but a bond of flourishing instead. So I think we want to play the bond to try and find a land. No forest, but I guess we'll settle with the swamp. And then we can play Sawtooth and a land as well. All right, so hopefully the second Sawtooth sticks around for a turn. We get to play Citadel. And the next two lands we find on top, we can ignore. Opponent replaces a Sawtooth, afraid of getting their Hostage Taker killed. Alright, perfect. So, don't think we want to play the land in case there's multiple lands on top, so we'll just play the Citadel for now. Lands, Branch Walker. So now we're just basically looking for a Wild Growth Walker. Keep that on top. Second Sawtooth will keep.
getting pretty low here. This can gain us some life back. And there's a Wild Growth Walker. And we can play it from hand. I guess we'll play a Gift first. Play a map. Can play this tapped. Scry that to the bottom. Another map, so I think we have to end our turn here. And we could decide to play the Wild Growth first. Kind of want to keep it in hand to protect it from removal since it's pretty important here. And I don't think I want to go to one to play the map. That way we can play a potential Branch Walker or Lanner Elves off the top with a Citadel instead and gain more life with Wild Growth to make it easier to combo off. So I think I'll just say go for now. Uh, no need to attack. And see what they do. If they kill the Citadel, we've got a backup copy anyway. And then next turn we have Wild Growth plus Jade Lights, which can also gain us a ton of life so we can keep comboing off. Alright, Brontodon's gonna go after the Citadel. And at this point we want to find Path of Discovery, more Explorer creatures in general. Alright, there goes the Citadel, not gonna sack anything. And then we could scry this map to the bottom with the treasure map here. I think that's okay. Don't really need an additional map. Alright, not a Surtooth off the top. So we gotta start this turn by playing the Citadel. Land off the top we can play tapped. Play this one for free. Down to one. Play Wild Growth from hand. Play Jade Light from hand. Gain some life, draw some lands. Wild Growth will keep. Play Bonds. Find Jade Light Ranger. Play some more lands. Path of Discovery. There we go. Alright, so we're done playing lands of the top, so we'll scry with the treasure map. See if we can find some more explorer creatures. Not yet. Alright, let's keep going. Keep Wild Growth Walker on top for sure. And the second path of discovery means it's going to be unlikely to hit more land pockets. And then we were just going to need to find a second citadel at some point and sack 10 more permanents or maybe get an attack step in at some point. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable looking hand. Some ways to ramp, find mana and then the citadel to top it off. Up against turn 1 watery grave, let's see if they have a thought erasure here. They do. That's unfortunate. So that likely goes after the Citadel here. They could also go after Jade Light if they have something else to handle the Bolas Citadel. So the control matchups boil down to whether or not we can top deck the Bolas Citadel at the right time and hopefully the opponent is out of uh, counter spells at that time. The beatdown plan usually doesn't really work out in this matchup. Alright, so kind of want more lands, already have a sword tooth. Could also end up flooding out since we do have a double gift already. Yeah, th I think I still take the land. That way with a future bond we can maybe afford to get something a bit better. Opponent decided to take the two here. I guess they wanted to keep up Mortify. So I guess we can play the treasure map to waste their mana. and uh, try and transform the treasure map as soon as possible. So we're looking for additional copies of Bolas the Citadel, since the first one's probably not going to resolve. And do we scry an upkeep? Um, I think we'll take our draw step for now. Right, Path of Discovery is not bad, so if the Gift of Paradise gets killed by Mortify, it's much better than the Path of Discovery getting killed. So we want to make sure to 
tap our dual lands so we can enchant one of our basics. Gain some life. Point on Dulcimer to find a gift, that's fine. Still gain a bit of life back. Can scry end of turn, and then next turn transform the treasure map, which would give us enough mana for Citadel, and our opponent doesn't have double blue mana yet, so unless they have like a negate or a syncopate, the Citadel might actually resolve. Overgrown 2, I'll keep. So let's flip the map. Bottom the forest now, since we don't want to hit that once we do. Hopefully resolve Citadel, pay 2. So we can keep an extra treasure token. Alright, that resolves. Another Citadel on top is awkward. Alright, I mean, I can still just draw it, so we have a backup copy in case they Teferi minus on the first one. Well, I guess their opponent knows what's incoming, so they probably should have taken the Citadel with the Thought Erasure, maybe they had some Absorbs in hand, but never found a double blue to cast them. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. So we'll keep. Turn 1 Hunted Witness. Is it Mono White Aggro? Or Aristocrats? We'll find out right now. Alright, Mono White confirmed. And Chinese Pride Mates, so they're on the life gain variant. Well, we're about to gain a lot of life ourselves. So what's our plan? I guess we could play Gifts, and then if we draw a land next turn we can go Wild Growth plus Jade Light. If we don't we still get to go Wild Growth plus Branch Walker. I guess that's okay. It's more mana efficient than playing the Wild Growth Walker this turn, even though the Wild Growth could potentially block. But if our opponent plays Leonin Vanguard, for example, then Pride Mate would grow and we wouldn't be able to block anyway, and that's exactly what happens. Alright, opponent with a very good start, double Pride Mate plus Vanguard. Let's see if we can uh, stabilize regardless. So did not find the land, so we only get to go Wild Growth Walker into Branch Walker instead of Jade Light. Could also play Path of Discovery and take a big beating, hope they don't have Conclave Tribunal, and then next turn go off. I guess that's also reasonable. If they get rid of Path of Discovery, then we ended up taking more damage than necessary, but this could be worth it. Take 11, down to 7, and the land is great. Alright, so we get to go Wild Growth Walker into Jade Light Ranger. Do we keep Lunar Elves? It's an extra explorer for Path of Discovery and Wild Growth Walker, but I think we can do better. Surtooth is better. So next turn we get to go Branch Walker plus Sortooth, and then we're just a Citadel away from going off. Opponent gets in there. Well, don't think we can play around Pride of Conquerors here, or can we? I guess we could. So if they do have Pride of Conquerors, we fall to 1, but then next turn we can hopefully recover and stabilize. Could also block the Snubhorn, but I think the Vanguard's more important here. And this pretty much forces them to use the Pride of Conquerors if they have it. Alright. So down to 1 we go. Well, let's see if we can uh, stabilize from this position. It's not going to be easy. Not a wild growth on top.
pass the turn. So we've got blockers for the pride mate now. Well, our opponent had pretty much the ideal draw. I guess they didn't have any disruption in the form of Conclave Tribunals, but we don't even know if they play those. Healer Saw can grow the Pride Mate still, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll keep all the Wild Growth Walkers I can get. Run out a treasure map. Guess we can scry end of turn here. No need to do it right away. But I'm likely just gonna keep on top and just scry so we can put a counter on the treasure map. And yeah, there we go. Wild Growth Walker manages to stabilize just in time. No Bolas Citadel required quite yet, even though eventually we were gonna find the Bolas Citadel to completely take over the game with those Wild Growth Walkers in play. Alright, that's gonna do it for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.